Hello everyone and a very happy Wednesday to you. Um, I wanted to just update you on how Russ is doing. He is fine. We are so thankful for vaccines and boosters. Um, you know, this time last year, Russ got COVID and he was sicker than a dog. He was so sick. And now this year, after being vaccinated and boosted, it's really just like mild cold symptoms that he's experiencing. And so I just want to thank everyone for stepping in, for helping out, um, for just dropping off food and supplies and just all of the love and the prayers that you have poured out to Russ and I. Um, we are so, so, so grateful. Um, I have obviously been home a lot and um, either converting my meetings to Zoom meetings or just postponing them in general this week. And um, so I've been spending a lot of time just reading, prepping for um, sermons, and just been a lot, spending a lot of time researching the Old Testament, um, especially because we're in the book of Genesis for our sermon series this winter and so I was like reading a commentary on kind of like major themes in the Old Testament and how it can be really confusing to folks and it kind of led me down this rabbit trail of reading First Samuel and a story and a major um, theme in First Samuel is one that I want to talk about today in today's devotional. Um, comparison, comparison and wanting to be like everyone else. So I don't know about you, but I always felt like trying to fit in and looking like everybody else was something that I was going to outgrow, right? Like I would really struggle with it in elementary school and then in middle school and high school. But then like once I became an adult, I just wouldn't really care about fitting in. And the reality is that's just not the case, right? Um, adults struggle with it just as much as younger folks do. And Israel struggled with it too. Israel um, was this people that had God, Yahweh God, who did incredible things for them, who was with them, who established a covenant with them, um, a covenant that began with God and Noah and then Abraham and Noah and then Moses. Um, and so, you know, we see this covenant established. We see God taking care of the people, providing for the people, rescuing the people from slavery, kind of a big part of Exodus in the Old Testament. And yet we get to the book of First Samuel and the people look to their left and they look to their right and they see all of the other cultures and civilizations and people groups and tribes that are having earthly kings. Got a king. So guess what? Israel comes to their prophet Samuel and says, we want a king just like all of these other people groups have kings. And why don't we have one? Samuel says, because you have the Lord. You have the Lord God, Yahweh, who has gotten you out of slavery, who has provided for your every need, who has made sure to fight your battles. Um, the God that we have is greater than any king. And guess what they did? They said, no, we really want an earthly king. And so Samuel says, this is not going to end well, right? Um, I'm sure all of us have had those moments where we're about to do something really stupid and we're talking about it with our spouse or our friends, um, family members, and we say, well, this is what I'm going to do. And the famous words from our loved one is, okay, like do whatever you want to do, but this isn't going to end well. So it's essentially what Samuel says to the people and they demand a king. And so they get Saul. And again, this prophetically, Samuel the prophet does not end well. Saul is a narcissist. He is awful. He's got so much pride. He's oppressive. He's selfish. He's ruthless. And it just stinks for a really long time because Israel falls into that trap of, oh, well, if we're like everyone else, and if we try to model and emulate what the rest of the world does, we'll be happy. 
And so it's really easy, I think, for us to read this story and again, judge Israel and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, you know, Jesus is our earthly king. Why would they fall into that? Da, 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 da. The reality is we do it all the time. You know, we fall into the kings of this world, like wanting to have the best cars or the best stuff. We fall into the kings of our, our appearance and wanting to have a goal weight and weigh a certain amount or look a certain amount. We get really self-conscious when we start to have gray hair or wrinkles. Um, we have certain kings in our life like control or gossip um, pride in our egos. And the thing about these kings is, no, they're not like King Saul and 1 Samuel, but they're not going to fulfill us. Ultimately, they're going to break our hearts. And no matter what, those earthly kings will actually not pro provide what we need. Um, so I love how gracious God is in this story. I'm, you know, reading through 1 Samuel, um, it would have been so easy for God to say, be mad and spiteful and, you know, turn his back on the people. But he didn't when they kind of spit in his face and were like, well, we want an earthly king to be like everybody else because that's the cool thing, right? It's kind of like when kids come to their parents and they're like, well, all the other kids at school have it. And you've been working so hard to provide like a good home for your child. And they just demand these things that you know they don't need because they're like spoiled and feel entitled. It's kind of like that. So God is gracious with them. And even though Saul is a very bad king and does a bad job, they get David who again is a human and he's not perfect, but David and the line of David and the covenant that's established through David, that continued covenant leads us to Jesus because we know the divinic line ends with Joseph and Jesus. So it's really beautiful because this thing that started out with sin and just comparison, falling into comparison, wanting to be like everyone else was redeemed into something really beautiful where God said, okay, you want an earthly king that's going to disappoint you, but I'm going to be here and I'm going to provide the real one true king, God, who is king, Jesus, the son of God, who is our true king. Um, and that's going to be all the way through those bad decisions, right? So I just think that it's so important for us to remember that. What is really going to fulfill us? What is really going to um, provide for us? And it's not the things of this world. It's not the people of this world or the leaders of this world. Um, it's certainly not just running after money or material goods or how, you know, what appearance we are, who has certain gossip about what's going on in the community and, you know, all of those things. Those things will demand too much and will run us dry. But our real true king, Jesus, will always continue to fill us up to bring fulfillment. And if we allow him to, Jesus will not only grow us and transform us in holiness, but also in contentment, where we're just happy with what we have. Um, we grow in gratitude when we have Christ. And so that's just my prayer for us today. Um, as I've been thinking about the Old Testament, um, how God continues to work through sinners for sinners um, and how that all ties in to Christ. Um, just my, my musings um, that we might want to seek out an earthly king, um, but we will miss out on real true freedom, contentment, and fulfillment, which is from the true King, Jesus Christ. So blessings to all of you. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Um, again, if you think about it, please, please be praying for me that I do not get COVID 
and for Russ who is downstairs um, to just recover well. Talk to you later.